It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding him about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Cofferville just to shut her up. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Brothers paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The long men had been tracking the Daltons for months, now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by a man in the law for it. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. Don't give up eventually. We just gotta wait the son of a bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. Heroic men like him, who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Like Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Is that Silas Green? Son of a bitch! Taking down those thieving Daltons. His name was Silas Greaves. And when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. The Daltons blew up a safe and were all set to hightail it out of there. I was late to the party and Coffeeville was already up in arms. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies.
I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. Oh, you are the shit out of Finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffeeville. dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the dolphin running with the money and didn't want to lose it. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the dolphins hold up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the dolphins. They were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the dolphins. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. Did the Dolphins hole up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Dolphins. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Dolphins. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. We gotta get out of here! I think they know who we are! And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old foods and cans had caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. Youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Reed. This is where it is for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. And I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? Ah! 
But I have to admit, that boy had grit. You get those suckers! It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't get away with this! And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track you to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Not by my recollection. It was damp and foggy as hell. It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. It was autumn. The maple trees were in full color, red as blood. The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. Except for some son of bitches ahead of me wanted to do me harm, so I had to face them alone. I wondered why my compatriots didn't come running when they heard the shots. So did you find the dogs? Established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause. Point B and I was under serious attack. My reinforcements was nowhere to be seen. I scrambled up top to get a better view, but just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running for the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. Steve? So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Oh. Steve? Steve? Uh, huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp?
That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. Oh, I I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred thing. It's a bond like no other. Bounty hunters! Stop that, soldier! So did you ever find the damn dogs? Not yet. But I did find a few of their cousins. You can breed like rabbits. More Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about. somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. And that's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Guess it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was in that a fusillade of bullets come raining down from our house. And those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. But among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. You don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something. I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn in hell. Then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh? But it 
turned out that they had me. Uh. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played That's me so like a fiddle. All, Apparently, oh. the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth Ugh. proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Well, yeah, but I was in a fight. Did you hear about that ship that's gonna launch next year? Largest one in the world? Um, you're well, talking about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed to. I don't think the reason slow. So anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic <coughs> is unsafe. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how'd you get off it, Mr. Green? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow I managed to finally disembark. It was time to settle this once and for all. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. They got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868 and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but being my older brothers were bigger and heavier, they were already dead. And right then, I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo, you know about. But Bob eluded me, until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. 